Real estate investment presentation, jobs, growth, and employment. Get ready because we're raising the stakes with real estate. What is jobs growth? As we look at some of these employment type numbers from a real estate investment standpoint, there's a couple things that we want to keep in mind in terms of our goals. One is going to be the economic health and the economic conditions with regards to the national health as well as the local level and then be able to kind of compare and contrast the two to get an idea of where we stand with regards to the place that we are investing in. Employment jobs numbers are going to be a key component to the economic health. Obviously, jobs being able to earn is one of the major things that help an area and economy to grow. And that, of course, is going to have a huge impact on the real estate investment areas as well. So a couple things just to keep in mind when you start to dig in to how you might be doing some comparisons with these numbers would be that you might look at the national side first and then compare the local level to it and then compare the trends between the two. So when we're looking at the national side, we're saying, well, what's the unemployment health or what's the employment health in general? What are the industries that are involved on the national side that in essence are driving the national employment in general? And then we can see the trend in employment and then look at the local level and see whether or not the employment level is higher or lower than the national level and the growth rates in terms of employment do we think it's going to be a continuing to employ over time and then we can also think about the specific industries that are going to be involved comparing the industry to the national level and thinking about is that industry likely to grow as well considering the size of the population the need for the resources that that industry is particularly in. And you can also think about some comparisons with regards to how in alignment are, are the growth areas with the kind of national goals that are going to be involved as well, because the national goals, whether you like it or not, are probably going to have some influences with regards to local areas and the particular industries that are involved there with regards to future growth. And these long-term kind of trends are what we want to keep an eye on with regards to investing in real estate if we're going to be investing over a long time period. So we're going to dive into some of these statistics and then you can kind of research them more on your own and dig into the details. Obviously, the details are going to be specific with regards to where you're particularly looking into, but the employment numbers are a good, a good indicator and a good place to go to start digging in and doing some comparisons. So what is job growth? We're going to be referencing Investopedia by Will Kinton. Investopedia is a place you can go to look up investment related terminology and continue your research from there. So jobs growth is a figure measured by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now there's going to be other kind of statistics that you can drill down on. We're going to be concentrating here on jobs growth. But once you get into the Bureau of Labor Statistics, then you can start drilling down on unemployment numbers, job by industry, job growth levels, looking at trends over time, looking at industry trends. So you can kind of drill down on the data from that level. So, so the, 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 the tracks how many jobs are created in the country on a monthly basis. So obviously from a national standpoint, this is, this is one of those numbers that are going to be tracked often in terms of what are the job growth numbers in general. Again, it's a huge indicating number just in terms of economic health in general. Are jobs going up? Are jobs going down? Obviously, again, whether you're talking about the national level or the local level, increases in jobs and projected increases in jobs would be good with regards to health of the economy and therefore, of course, good for home purchases. Jobs growth is often used as a measure of economic expansion and regarded as a litmus test for the national economic health. Now, again, that's not the only statistic or number out there. That's kind of like the baseline number. And again, you could drill down from there to get into more detail. Jobs growth figures are a core part of the BLS Employment Situation Summary, which serves as a widely watched and reported economic indicator because of its headline figures on jobs growth and unemployment. The jobs growth figure is expressed as the growth number of jobs created in the American economy in the previous month. So you got the month by month analysis. Obviously, there are estimates. You want to have an idea of the estimated numbers. They revise them from time to time. So jobs growth data is reported in many places because it is a popular test of the nation's economic well-being. Numbers exceeding 100,000 jobs added being seen as positive. So again, you can get an idea of the jobs that are being added on the national level. And then you could try to get a ratio in terms of where you are currently at to see if you're basically in alignment or above or below 
with regards to the national jobs level, which could give you some indication, of course, of the economic health of the area you're looking into. Generally speaking, a 100,000 to 150,000 is seen as a minimum figure that is needed to keep economic growth healthy. This means there are new people entering the workforce all the time. The more a jobs growth number exceeds this range, the better the perceived health of the economy. Jobs growth numbers below the 100,000 to 150 range are seen as potential signs of a slowdown and negative job growth numbers tend to cause serious concerns. So again, we can look at those trends on the national level and then try to compare them on the regional level and see is the, is the regional level doing better or worse than the national levels? And what do you expect to be happening in the future? What are gonna be the major drivers on the national level that are pulling things up? Are the regions that we're looking into in alignment with those? Are the regions we're looking into in alignment with kind of the national kind of goals or whatnot? Or are the regional areas we're looking into have core core things that are necessary for the country, whether they line up to the national goals or not, that are going to be that are going to be needed. So that said, it is important to remember that jobs growth numbers in the employment situation summary have a wide margin of error. So if you're looking at the latest numbers, then those numbers are going to be subject to change. They're going to, they might revise them over time. So the jobs growth numbers for a particular month are revised over time and become more accurate once they are firmly in the past. So if you go, you go a little bit further back, you're more likely to get the data that's going to be more secure. If you're looking at the job health of a particular area, you're probably looking at, you want to look at the trends as well over time and see if you got a positive or negative trend in terms of jobs growth and in the industries that you think are going to be healthy industries possibly for the place that you're considering to invest in. This means the current figure for a particular month can be off by over 100,000, but put another way, a negative jobs growth number could actually be a modest gain, as could a jobs growth number that clears the minimum growth range by 100,000. Although this level of inaccuracy is far from common, it does occur regularly enough to keep healthy skepticism. So again, those latest numbers could be revised. The Bureau of Labor Statistics compiles jobs growth data by sending out a survey and publishing the results every month. So, there, so it's not a perfect, obviously, situation here. It's survey-based and whatnot. The revisions will be there, but we, the numbers of what we have, we have what we have with regards to the data in order to make our decisions. So the employment situation summary contains jobs growth figures, combines data from the BLS household survey tracking unemployment and demographic and the established survey that focuses on non-farm employment by industry. The data from these two surveys is used to provide the headline figures on jobs growth and unemployment. How jobs growth is measured, although jobs growth is available by industry, so again, you can look it up by industry. The most commonly reported number is total non-form payrolls, which tracks the total uh, no number of people in the country being paid for work that is not farming. The data is available and on the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. So that's where you want to go to start to drill down on these numbers. And again, there's a lot more statistics that you can drill down and you got to dig a little bit deeper than just looking at the headline numbers for the job growth on the national level but you want to drill down deeper and, and pick up some numbers that are going to be on the on the national side and then on yours on the local side and then start digging into your comparisons uh, from there also looking into industries looking into the trends over time comparing the trends from the local level to the national level. So the first revision occurs when the following month's employment situation report is published and more accurate data is available for the previous month. A second revision is done as part of the benchmarking revision using data from the quarterly census of employment and wages. So employment by industry, you have the Bureau, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's where you probably wanna to go to kind of start digging into your data research with regards to the economic environment where you are thinking about investing in and looking specifically at the indicator here of employment statistics, which again is a huge economic indicator of a region on the national level and the local level. So again, you can get an idea of the national health, whatever the national health is, then you wanna be comparing on the local level and see if you're above or below that national health level. And then obviously whatever your investment goals are, you can basically be looking in from there. And obviously you would think 
looking into real estate generally you're looking into places that you think are going to be growing over time or that you think are somehow undervalued in some way shape or form and if you're looking for long-term investments you're looking for those areas those pockets of areas <clears throat> that are likely to grow over time we talked about in the past of looking about areas that might have like an optimized size in terms of the city level do you think they're going to continue to grow past that size have they hit their optimal size are, are new companies moving into the area that are going to be in alignment with possibly national goals or are the area has a situation or some resource that the country desperately needs whether they whether they like it or not on the national side of things that you think is going to you know sustain further growth into the future these are some kind of comparisons that you could basically be be comparing or looking into start to drilling down on and the employment statistics can help with that this is just one ratio that you can kind of use on down below this is the regional uh, employment in industry so you can try to look at the employment in industry and divide that by the regional employment total so you could say what's my regional total employment and what's my regional industry employment and get an idea of that particular industry with regards or with relation to the total and then you can compare that divide that by the u.s employment in industry divided by the u.s employment total so you could try to figure out then you know the relationship between the industry level compared to the total that you're looking at compared to the to that industry level to the u.s total and again you're getting some idea or the feel about what's what the major economic drivers in terms of employment in a particular industry and there's pros and cons to it if you've got like a big company that is or is moving into an industry or that is a dominant economic force where most people work for that company for example then that could be good and that if that company is growing the health of that place will of course increase obviously if, if google moved in next door and made it your national office or something like that that would probably be a boost to the to the economy but on the downside of course if something becomes obsolete if google suddenly the next day became obsolete some new technology came out and and does a lot of what google does for whatever reason i don't know how that would happen but if that happened <laughs> then the, there could be a decline because now you have this this concentration and dependence on one industry so it's just like diversification anywhere else in that case you're thinking all right is there if there's a is this population dependent on one particular thing one particular industry and then how likely is that industry basically to grow over time if it's more diverse in terms of of the area that is there there's multiple different industries then you, you you know might have more diversity but but less likelihood for it to kind of shoot up or go down based on you know the benefits of one particular industry so you got to so you got to weigh the you know the risk versus the reward just like with anything else balancing out taking into consideration the potential increases and the risks involved with them once again referencing investopedia a place you can go to look up investment related terminology continuing your research from there jobs growth by will kenton fact checked by katrina M municello reviewed by michael j boyle on september 28 2021 as time passes you might want to take a look at investopedia and see if they update things over time as time goes by